Tonight I'm going to depart for a moment from our series of, mer series of message on the miracles. It was uh, a message that has been growing upon my heart and I want to, uh, want to speak with it, <clears throat> speak about it tonight. I call it deep, calls unto deep. Yeah. Now there's a certain uh, phenomenon that exists in the religious world, that is something of deep concern to me. I was once victimized by it myself, so that's why I'm very conscious, acutely conscious of it. <clears throat> and I have some uh, rather intimate knowledge about the handicap of it. And that is that the, the bane of being religiously shallow. And just having surface religion, just on the top, nothing real deep, too soulish. Man is comprised of three fundamental parts. Listed in the First Thessalonians 5.20, from the superior to the inferior, from the greatest to the least. He's comprised of spirit, soul, and body. If we're to look at vertically as a soil strata, spirit is the deepest. It's where the purest water is. It's where the greatest foundation is. Soulish isn't as deep. There's a lot of emotion in it. There's a lot of thought in it, but it's not deep. And the flesh is like got <laughs> right up on the, it's like a hard ground on which nothing grows. Now, particularly in our country, in my, this is my own judgment, in my judgment, the best, I'm talking now about the best, the best religion is mostly soulish. Mm -hmm. There's something about it that appeals, this goes beneath a little bit, beneath the top of life, touches the emotion, makes people think some, but it's too soulish. Mm -hmm. It doesn't appeal to the most fundamental part of man's nature. You can tell it by the average prayer request. You can tell it by the nature of the praise, falsely so called. You can tell it by the superficial relationships. You can tell it by the dominant ignorance of scripture and lack of some kind of consistent involvement in the things of God. It's all telling you something. Tell you this is an era of, of shallow, at the very best, soulish religion. It's too casual. It's too ordinary. It's too average. There's too much room for flesh in it. Now, there are some deep things of God to be known. Mm -hmm. There are. 1 Corinthians 2.10 reminds us that God has revealed them. That's the things He's prepared for them that love Him. He's revealed them to us by the Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep. If you want the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to teach you the ABCs, you just as well drop out of the kingdom right now, because He's not going to do it. <clears throat> he searches the deep things of God, not the shallow things, not the apparent things, not the things very evident. Not the things common sense should teach people. Mm -hmm. He searches the deep things of God. And in fact, that's the only way you can access them. Mm -hmm. If the Holy Spirit does not show you these things, you will not see them. Mm -hmm. Amen. You cannot see them. Well, let me make it more relevant to what I'm talking about here tonight. If a person dwells on the surface of spiritual life, he will never understand God. It will not happen. There are deep things to be known. And only a deep walk will bring those into your, into your possession. The scriptures say, Romans 11, 33, Oh, the depth. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. Now what that means is they're too deep for you to find them on your own. Amen. You can't dig that deep. 
It doesn't mean they can't be known. It means the Spirit's got to show them to you. And these are the things that sustain the soul. These are the things that feed the human spirit and nurture you. It's these deep things of God. Twice in Scripture this phrase is found. 2 Kings 19.30 and Isaiah 37.31, the same words. And the remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah shall again take root downward and bear fruit upward. Now do you wonder why it appears, why so little spiritual fruit appears? It's because there's no root mm -hmm. downward. You can't uh, emulate these fruits. So we're going to talk about this uh, some tonight. About the heart growing bigger, the capacity growing bigger, that there's like plateaus of spiritual life. You are, you are expected in Christ to grow. You are expected. Amen. Uh -huh. Salvation will shut down if you don't grow. Mm -hmm. Believe me, I tell you this. Mm -hmm. I think you know this, but this is like it's on my heart, so I've got to say it. Amen. I've got to say it. There are, there are people that want to go further with God sometimes. But they don't go further because they have no root. Uh -huh. Salvation is calculated to function and work where there's intense interest and commitment Amen. and devotion Amen. and faith. And if that isn't there, heaven shuts. That's it. It becomes like brass. And there's been people all through history can tell you this is the truth. Mm -hmm. That when they wanted God, they couldn't find Him. He wouldn't answer. Heaven was like, shut up. Why was it? Because they did not advance uh -huh. in root downward. So here's my text, Psalm 42, 7. And here's what I'm going to teach tonight. That there are ways God has of moving you to deeper ground. And it's almost always through trouble. Almost always. <coughs> Here's the text. Deep calleth unto deep at the noise of thy water spouts. All thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. A picture of absolute helplessness. Mm -hmm. Nothing can get the person out of this. The th nothing outside of God's intervention. Now here's what I'm going to say. If this hasn't happened to you, it will. Mm -hmm. If you're serious. Yeah. If you're serious, you're going to be brought to a point where there isn't anything you can do, nothing that you've done before works. No little secret tip about drawing close to God will work. <laughs> God will bring you to a point where you absolutely, there is no way out. Nothing works at all. And he does this to block off every other resource. Mm -hmm. He shuts you up to himself. That's, that's what I'm going to Amen. proclaim tonight. Deep calls on a deep. Think of it this way. God's deep calls to your deep. It's a deep part of you, too. Or look at it this way. Your deep calls to God's deep. There comes a time when you're not satisfied with clouds and flowers. <laughs> nice warm days and money in the bank and food in the refrigerator. There comes a time that's Quite frankly, not enough. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's not enough to have your health and to have good friends That's and right. everyone in the family to be well. That's all a blessing, but God will bring you to a point where that's not enough. Thank you. God has no interest in shallow, superficial, casual, perfunctory, Amen. everyday religion. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Now here's a statement that was made in the book of Job before there was a Bible. They saw something here. Job 32, 8. There is a spirit in man. And the inspiration of the Almighty 
Give us them understanding. Amen. Now we know more about this now than Job did because God has told us more. But God doesn't give this deeper part of man understanding through ordinary means. This is not how it comes. There is a new creation that God speaks exclusively to. It's called a new man. In Colossians 3.10, Ephesians 3.16 calls it the inner, inward man. 2 Corinthians 5.17 calls it the new creation. This is a very real thing. This is not a theoretical thing. It's very real. Something has been created <coughs> by God in Christ. That's what God aims to talk to, mm -hmm. what He's going to instruct. Now earnestly, the divine deep, remember the deep things of God, His judgments and ways are deep, that part of God, not the uh, natural creation, what you see in the natural creation, that's true, I understand, that's true. That's not what's calling out. Mm -hmm. There's a deep part of God calls to man's deep, not to the surface life, to the deep, down underneath the surface. Jesus says, come unto me. Who's he saying that to? What's he saying that to? All you labor and heavy laden. He's talking to the deep part of man. Come ye to the waters. Isaiah 55, 1. It's God's deep part of his heart. Calling to the deep part of man. Come unto me and drink. Jesus said, John 7, 39. Now here in this, I'm pointing out here that God wants the real you. He doesn't want a, a Sunday you. That's right. He's got plenty of that already. He doesn't want just a slavishly obedient, keep the commandments, do the do everything you're supposed to do, and nothing more you. That's not what he wants, not what he's looking for, not why he made man. He didn't make mankind for casual friendship, occasional, once in a while. In the hour maybe of crisis, mm -hmm. this isn't what this is all about. Uh, here in the deeper part of man, here's where divine fellowship is actually realized. You can't fellowship with God in your body. Mm -hmm. Some people say, I know I had the Holy Ghost because they got a kingly point in their body. This isn't true. They may, they may have a convincing type speech, but you may rest assured that the Almighty God is not going kind to of confirm his presence with you in the part of you that he's cursed. Mm -hmm. This just is not Amen. true. Amen. Amen. I, I'm fully capable of support in this case. If there was ever anybody who wanted publicly to go to to go to bed on this, I could bury him, and I'm quite willing to do so. Mm -hmm. I really, I really have no care for this type of thing. Yeah. Because it's hurting people. That's right. Uh huh. People have a little tingly feeling tingling sensations in their body. It all may sound very nice, but see if you can find something like that in the Scripture. No. It's the deep part of you God wants that's underneath Amen. Amen. this body. Now, this deep part of mankind, this is the part where groaning occurs. <clears throat> this groaning is actually, it's, in a way, it's unintelligible to the flesh. It's something, it's something that you can't really explain in words. You, if you have never experienced it, you like, don't know what he's talking about. But here, let me give you some examples of this groaning, which is the deep. This is the deep. This is the, the part where the groaning is going on. That's the part God's talking to. Uh -huh. Romans 7, 24. Here's a groan, articulated groan. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Uh -huh. That's a groan. Amen. Some people glorify the body. Mm -hmm. Paul wants to get out of it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah, let's take it again. Romans here's doctrine. Let's look at the doctrine. In uh, Romans 8, chapter, verse 23 through 27. He's just told us about creation is groaning and travailing. The whole creation, because it knows it's going to die. And it's longing for the liberty that's ahead. Mm -hmm. Not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. It's deep in the deep part. We ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to with the redemption of the body. For we are saved by hope. 
But hope that seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Likewise also the Spirit helps our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. He that searcheth the hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And what he's saying is there's a part of you that wants God that's like unintelligible. You can't, you can't put it in human speech. It's a deep, profound longing you can't explain, but you know it's there. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit, who searches the deep things of God, also searches the deep things of man. And he, he brings this up before God, or else you could never get the resources that you intuitively sense you need, but you can't spell it out. See? It's a deep part. The Holy Spirit helps that situation. Groaning. Here's another groan. We that are in this body, we groan. Not for that we would be unclothed or naked, but clothed upon with our house that is from heaven. So we're, we're discontent. Mm -hmm. God's, talk, God's calling out to that discontented part. Gee? Now we talked some this morning among ourselves about the, uh, the liability of entertainment, which is we're in an entertainment crazed society. It keeps you up here on the surface. Where if there is groaning, it's like drowned it out by all the noise up on the surface. Some people have never are in tune with themselves because they're always up here in the entertainment, surface, shallow part of life. God, now God, God has a way of handling this. This is what we're going to get down to. <clears throat> deep calls in the deep at the noise of your water spouts. Now water spouts are like tornadoes that happen over the water. And men are like helpless. Mm -hmm. One of these water spouts comes down on you. <laughs> there is no scientific way of getting rid of it. Mm -hmm. Right. It dissipates. It dissipates all the power and wisdom of men. It, it drains it all away. Thy water spouts. They're noisy. They get your attention. <laughs> There's nothing you can do about it. it strips you of all natural, natural things. I, let's, I'm going to take, let me give you some examples of some water spouts that took people further than they'd ever been before and dried up all the resources they had before. Let's take first of all Joseph. Joseph was a godly young man. Even though his brothers opposed him, he had some dreams when he was at home and had some insights into the future. But when he was delivered to Egypt, a, a, a water spout mm -hmm. come down on him and settled on him for 13 years. Yeah. <clears throat> Now the psalmist, he sort of wraps this up in a few words. Psalm 105, 17. He sent a man before the, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant whose feet they hurt with fetters. He was laid in iron. Water spout. Nothing he could do. Nothing he could do about it. Until the time when it is word came, the word of the Lord tried him. What was it? It was deep. Call him to deep. Mm -hmm. I can tell you, Joseph got deeper in prison. Amen. There were things on the surface. <laughs> God dried up everything else. Amen. Joseph had never been in prison before. That's right. He'd never been in shackles before. He'd never been accused and helpless under the sway of a monarch of a heathen nation before. Uh -huh. 
God, my God's going to bring something good out of this. This is how God yes. gets you deep. Amen. So Genesis 50, 20, sometimes pass. He's on the throne now. Uh -huh. And he looks back and he assesses what's happened. This is going to confirm that God's deep got through to Joseph's deep. Amen. But as for you, you thought it evil against me, but God meant it for good to bring to pass as it did this day to save much people alive. Now, how did he get, how did Joseph get qualified to do this? This is quite a responsibility to take a 30 year old man who was 30 years old, uh -huh. sat him on the throne of Egypt in the time of a worldwide famine. Uh huh. And he had to govern how you figured up to save up enough grain to feed the whole world. 30-year-old man took this over and did it very well. Amen. How did he do it? How was he able to do this? God got deep. <laughs> he got his roots went down further. Let's take another case. Here's Paul, the apostle. He, when Joseph was in prison, his dreams didn't help him. They didn't help him then. He didn't have any brother to speak for him like Reuben. Not there. Here's Paul. He had his thorn in the flesh. Lest I be exalted above due measure. Through the abundance of revelations there was given to me. There was given, given to me mm -hmm. a thorn in the flesh. The messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above due measure. That is, God sent it, Satan delivered. He was the messenger boy. He was like the heavenly Western Union man. Mm -hmm. Except Satan never delivers blessings, but Satan does deliver thorns from God. Mm -hmm. Deep. Calling to deep. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. See, this never had a thorn before. He never had anything like this before. Mm -hmm. So it looked as though this is going to stymie his ministry, so to speak, his calling. But now in the process, he's getting, he's getting deep. Mm -hmm. His roots are getting deep. And he, Christ, said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. I see you've got to get deep to see that. Amen. When do people complain the most as a rule? It's when they're weak. Mm -hmm. When they're helpless. Huh? God says that's when divine strength kicks in. Amen. That's what he says. Amen. My strength is made perfect in weakness. That the weaker you are, the more I work. See, Amen. Nobody, nobody knows this by nature. You've got to have a deep root even to see this. Amen. You can philosophize about it. Quote the scripture. When it gets right down where the road of the rubber hits the road, you have to be stripped of all your strength before you can see that. Amen. It's just theoretical until that happens. Yeah. And God uh, can make it happen. Yeah. So at this time here, he couldn't, uh, he, he couldn't work the signs of an apostle when this thing hit. He couldn't pray the prayer of faith when this thing hit. Whatever he had before was legitimate. But he couldn't deal with this. Let's take it a little further. And incidentally, he later, he said, I glory in my infirmities. <laughs> How can you glory in infirmities? You can't unless you're deep. Uh -huh. It's only a person who's got root. Mm -hmm. And say, this is, a, this is God's going to go to work now. The only person who's deep can see this. Amen. Let's take this other occasion in 2 Corinthians 1.8. Paul's in Asia. He said, We would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Above strength. In so much that we despaired even of life. So God just shut every door. Close it all off so that all that's left, God and Paul. That's it. There's nothing else left. No other resource. No magic routine. Fasting's not going to help this. <coughs> Timothy can't be called to help this. As smart as he is, this can't be thought out. You can't. Intellect fails here. 
Uh -huh. Deeps crawling under deep. There's a water spout. Mm -hmm. He's putting them in a situation and saying, this is really the way it is all the time. Uh -huh. yeah. Right. But see, it takes a water spout to uh -huh. uncover it and convince you that this is the way it is. Amen. Why do people like get mad at God? Aside from the fact that they're stupid. Why do they do this? Because they're too shallow. That's right. Amen. They can't see that their hands are in, their life is in His hands. Amen. All He has to do is this and they're gone. Yeah. Amen. See, they can't see this. That's yeah. why. <laughs> God has a way of bringing them to this conclusion. In this experience, deep is calling the deep. Often it comes in waves. I billows flow over me. It's one tidal wave after another. It's just like ten tsunamis in a row. Here they come. Boom. Just beat you down. Nobody could stop that single tsunami wave that hand right. here recently did. Nobody could say they saw it coming. They could see it. Well, yeah. <laughs> couldn't do a thing about it. I waves come over me. Let me give you an example of some of these waves. Here's Job. Oh, he experienced this. Job 1.14, there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plying and the asses feeding beside them, and the Sabians fell on them and took them all away. They've slain thy servants of the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Wave number one. Mm -hmm. While he was yet speaking, <laughs> wave number two. Another said, the fire of God fallen from heaven had burned up the sheep, the servants had consumed them, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. And while he was yet speaking, here comes another wave. They came also another saying, the Chaldeans made out three bands, fell on the camels, carried them away. Yea, slain thy servants <coughs> to the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. And while he was yet speaking, Wave number four. They came another also saying, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness, smote the four corners of the house, fell upon the young men. They're dead, and I only am come to escape to tell thee. Thy billows have gone over me. You think you could deal with something like that? Well, no, you couldn't. He couldn't either. That was the whole point. It was deep, mm -hmm. calling to deep. As I said, you may never have experienced it. Then again, maybe you did. We just to just find just come over with trouble, 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 just beat you down until there was nothing left, and all you could do is say help. <laughs> God reached the deep. Mm -hmm. That's the way it really is all the time. Get deep, stay deep. <clears throat> Jeremiah four and verse twenty. It reads, disaster on disaster is proclaimed. The New American Standard Bible says, destruction upon destruction. Just wave after wave after wave. Remember, our text says uh, about, about God's water spouts and his waves rolling, rolling, rolling over us. See, these are deep waters. Where deep, God's deep let me tell you, God wants to get beyond pop pop. Yeah. For some people, this is really a big deal. Mm -hmm. They think they can call God Papa. Well, we won't condemn them for saying that. But what I am going to tell them, you better be getting a little bit deeper than that if you expect to make some progress with God. If you think God satisfies you sitting on his knee as a little toddler and hearing little Bible stories, you are dead wrong. That's not what God's looking for. He could have picked out a few angels and tutored them like that. He's looking for deep. Calling unto deep. Let me give you some example of deep waters. If you're just, you're, they're drowning waters with the arm. Psalm 69, 14. Deliver me out of the mire. Let me not sink. Let me be delivered from them that hate me and out of deep waters. Let not the water flood overflow me. Let not the deep swallow me up and let not the pit shut her mouth upon me. Well, what is that? That's the deep part. 
That's the deep part of man calling the deep part of God. David said, I can't get out of this. They don't, earth doesn't have any counselors that can deal with this. See, so people that want to lean on other people, God brings them, if he's working with them, God brings them to a point where nobody else can help. Amen. And they know it. And when that happens, God's deep has reached their deep, mm -hmm. and something is about to happen. <laughs> Psalm 88, 7. Thy wrath lieth hard on me, and thou hast afflicted me with all thy waters. Helpless, total. Helpless. Psalm 88, 15. I am afflicted and ready to die from a youth up. While I suffer thy terrors, I am distracted. Well, that is the understatement of the day. Thy fierce wrath goeth over me. <coughs> thy terrors have cut me off. Remember, this is a man after God's own heart saying this. This isn't Nebuchadnezzar. This is David, the sweet psalmist of Israel. They come round about me, data like water. They compass me about together. This, this seems like I'm utterly alone. I could quote the text, I'm not alone. <laughs> but it sure does seem like I am. Mm -hmm. God's calling unto deep. Lamentations 3, 53. These, these are deep waters, see. They have cut off my life in the dungeon and cast a stone upon me. It's to shut the door with us. Waters float over my head. Then I said, I'm cut off. I called upon thy name, O Lord, out of the low dungeon. What is that? Deep. Deep called to deep, and then deep called to deep. God's not satisfied with a casual handshake. And the sun's shining, and the car starts. All oh, that's nice, I understand. <laughs> That's not where divine fellowship is realized. It's realized deeper. So God has a way of, of doing this. Jonah also experienced this. He said, out of the depths he cried. Mm -hmm. He cried to God. So God's calling to a deeper walk, more involvement, more separation from the world. See, Satan promotes a religion where you can live real up close to the world. You can live real close. Like it's across the street. Maybe you, you're not really enmeshed in it, but you can see it pretty clear. And you can hear it pretty good. God can bring you to a place where you can't even hear the world. He can bring you to a place where you're not even aware that anybody but God wants you. God can bring you to a place like Amen. that. And when he does, boom, it's up from there on. Amen. Deep. Calls in the deep. Not our text. David responded to these water spouts and these waves that rolled over him. The very next verse, Psalm 42, 8, says, Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime, and in his night his song will be with me, and my prayer unto the Lord of my life. What happened? The, this trouble, these water spouts and these waves summoned up something from David that you couldn't bring up any other way. Look at it again, Psalm 42, 9. I will say unto God, my rock, why hast thou forgotten me? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with the sword in my bones, my enemies reproach me while they say daily unto me, where is thy God? Which means that I can't give an answer. And I can't repel their attacks. And I'm totally helpless in this situation. Technically, God hadn't forgotten him, but experientially, he, that's what happened. Mm -hmm. And he, he stripped away from him all aids, all helps. There comes a time when you can't even run from trouble. Mm -hmm. There's no way to get away from it. <clears throat> so he pours out his soul to God, deep, calling him to deep. See, you, now you must reach depths before you can even call out like that. Mm -hmm. You can't call like that unless you've been stripped, so to speak, naked before the Lord. Which is the way really we really are. Mm -hmm. This is the way we really are. In fact, Jesus said, without me you can do nothing. Right. Very, very few Christians have really got hold of that. This 
would dry up a lot of Christian businesses. <laughs> the motivators, the psychiatrists, the counselors, the fundraisers, where would they be if people believed this? It would revolutionize church staffing. Amen. Without me, you can do nothing, even if you do have a big building. That's right. You can't. How do you learn that? Well, you can't learn it academically. <laughs> but you can, God can teach it. He taught Israel this lesson by destroying their temple. One stone wasn't left on another. He stripped them of the one physical representation of God that they had. And some people were hanging on to this for everything they had. And God took it from them. And he called to them when they were in Babylon. <laughs> His deep called to their deep when they were in these countries. Got through to them. Faith pleads for sight to be able to see. That's what it does. <clears throat> now when David was in this situation, and what a situation it was, playing the harp, it didn't help them. There are other times David would play his harp skillfully and an evil spirit would leave. He'd open up his saying on the harp. It soothed his soul. Hey, hey, the harp didn't work in this situation. And he couldn't pull out the sling and pull out the, slow, the stone and go about to defeat the foe. Huh? He said, my enemies are coming upon me. Why didn't he just haul out the old sling? Pick up five stones and take out the enemy. Huh? Why didn't he? God stripped him. He couldn't pick up Goliath's sword. He couldn't use him. He couldn't call Jonathan, who was closer to him than a woman would be to her husband, and have him come. He couldn't summon Joab, the mighty warrior. He was in a deep calling unto deep. Well, that's a kingdom experience, and there's a reason for it. <clears throat> when what you have, you want to cherish it. Now, mind you, I want to be careful how I say this. You want to cherish what you have, but you don't want to settle down there. Amen. And what God does, God, in governing his kingdom, he brings you to a point that what you have now won't work. He's going to want you to dig deeper. Amen. Go deeper. He's very gracious in the way he does it. Not going to take your life, but it, sometimes it seems like he is. This reveals the excellency of the powers of God, not of us. Now, Paul said we have this treasure in earthen vessel, which is very susceptible to falling apart and breaking and cracking and can't hold things. Yeah. And he says why it's this way, that, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. And he tells you we're troubled on every side. See? Couldn't get away from it. Not distressed. There's this little spark of hope, but it was all it was all God. He, there was no hope about letting go down to the Egyptians. Maybe some Assyrians can help us. Maybe some brethren in Jerusalem can dispatch some comforters down here. So it was all upward. We are perplexed. <laughs> Answers run out. We don't have any answers for this. We can't even tell you what's going on. Really. But we're not in despair. See, we're pointing God. We're deep. The deepest part's coming up. Persecuted. Just think about that. This is a man sent from God, empowered by God, filled with the Holy Spirit of God, protected by the holy angels of God, and he's persecuted? He even think that he would just repel his persecutors. Oh, deep. Calls unto deep and strips him of personal power, always bearing about in my body the dying of the Lord Jesus. He was cast down, not down, not destroyed. What is it? What well, this is deep? Call unto deep. It's God taking him to a deeper plateau where real benefits are granted. <clears throat> now there's uh, Paul experienced these waves of trouble. <laughs> We read where four waves, four waves hit, hit Job in the same day. 
And here's some waves that uh, waved over Paul, struck over Paul. <clears throat> in stripes above measure, in prisons more often, in deaths oft, of the Jews five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned, thrice <coughs> I suffered shipwreck, a day and a night have been in the deep. Waves, see. In journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. Waves from God. In weariness, in painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Waves, waves, thy billows coming over me. He adds in 2 Corinthians 11, 29, Who is weak? And I am not weak. <laughs> you talk about being stripped and feeling helpless. You think Paul says, I haven't experienced this? That's what he's telling you. My deep part. God reached my deep part. And I saw what God said doctrinally. God said this. That all flesh is grass. Now God said this. See, it takes a deep, calling on the deep for this to register yeah. on your conscience. Wonderful. Deep calling on the deep. <clears throat> his stability was always, the reason he was able to be stable is his deep responded. It wasn't his flesh that cried out, it was his spirit that cried out. <laughs> Whatever came out of his mouth came from his spirit, from his deep, from his deep, deep part. Here's some examples of this Psalm 130, verse 1. Out of the depths have I cried unto thee, O Lord. Yeah. Here's a prayer from the deep. Here's a prayer, here's a prayer from the deep. God's water spout come down on David. His waves roll over David. And here's how his deep part responded. Psalm 69, 13. As for me, my prayer is unto thee, O Lord, in an acceptable time, O God, in the multitude of thy mercy. Hear me in the truth of thy salvation. Deliver me out of the mire. Let me not sink. Let me be delivered from them that hate me and out of deep waters. Let not the water flood overflow me. Neither let the deep swallow me up. Let not the pit shut her mouth upon me. Hear me, O Lord, for thy loving kindness is good. Turn unto me according to the multitude of thy tender mercies. And hide not thy face from thy servant, for I am in trouble. Hear me speedily. Draw nigh unto my soul and redeem it. Deliver me because of mine enemies. Thou hast known my reproach and my shame and my dishonor. My adversaries are all before me. Reproach has broken my heart. I'm full of heaviness. I looked for some to take pity, but there was none. And for comforters I found none. They gave me also gold for my meat. And in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. I've run out of resources, Lord. Hear me. And I know I'm not going to come out of this pit unless you bring me out. And, of course, God did bring him out. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord, God brought him out. Now, for the people of God, they've really got to believe this, that nothing can really separate you from the love of God. Amen. But you cannot learn that by rote. Mm -hmm. You cannot learn that just by having the right... How can I say this? You... Uh, it can't just be intellectual. Mm -hmm. Amen. This has got to get down deep into your soul, or otherwise trouble will subvert you. Uh -huh. If it doesn't get down deep, and here's what I've been saying, is that God brings this deep to you through trouble. Is what he, this is how he does it. The trouble is not will not be greater than you can bear, but you don't have the faintest idea about what you can bear. Amen. You don't have the faintest notion what you're capable of enduring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But God does, and when He pours this water spout comes down and these waves go over you, it's not going to—it's not going to be to drown you. Uh -huh. It's not going to be to destroy you. 
Why would God destroy you with a water spot? He could just send a fire down, burn you up, and that'd be it. Yeah. But it's, it drives you down mm -hmm. deeper. Amen. Deeper with God. Nothing will be able to separate you from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. You believe that, the trouble will confirm it mm -hmm. because you'll come back. Some of you have experienced trouble like myself. I won't go into the things that I passed through, but I have passed through them. And I've been, it's made me deep. Yes. It's harder for the world to impress you mm -hmm. when you rebound from trouble. Yeah. When you're revived after it looked like you were dead. Amen. The world doesn't look the same after that. Mm -hmm. Doesn't look the same after that. Well, there's an enormous penalty for dwelling on the surface of life. And I really urge you mm -hmm. to fight against it. Yeah. I think I've already said this, but this is one of the liabilities of a fun and of a fun-filled life. This is one of the mm -hmm. liabilities of it. Is that it keeps you up on the surface. But as I say, if you're if you really are God's child. The water spout, <laughs> the day of the water spout will come. Yes. And there will not be a thing you can do about it. I can still, uh, I can still remember mm -hmm. in 1992, when Sister June called me, and little Benjamin was discovered with brain cancer. Now what, are you, now, what are you going to do? Nobody can really give us any kind of guarantees here. We learned to trust. Mm -hmm. And Benjamin did too. Trouble. Now there's one last thing. Do you suppose it's possible for Satan to defeat somebody who can look at trouble this way? Do you think Satan can bring you down if you can see this truth? That the very worst thing that you could conceive and maybe even more difficult you can, can conceive, if it comes upon you and drives you deeper and God brings you higher as a result, how could Satan ever hold to overcome a soul like that. That is why root protects you. 